Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> All of a sudden I have a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> I'm so glad you could come pray with me and I am very happy this morning to actually be doing this live again. Um, and we'll continue these sessions live uh, for a while anyway on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. for those that are available and can join in live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness. <clears throat> Last cup of coffee didn't go down the right way, I guess. Uh, or last sip. <coughs> Pardon. Um, of course, you can watch these anytime. Um, they'll be available here on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Um, we are continuing um, in our look at the Indispensable Guide to Practically Everything Prayer uh, by Marsha Ford. And one of the things that I like about her book is that it's very digestible. It's little small segments uh, she started off by having us look at those big questions that's, that so many of us have when we are first um, entering into the realm of prayer and uh, seeking to uh, learn more about prayer and deepen our prayer lives, which is exactly what these sessions are designed to do. Of course, we also will pray uh, together a little bit later on, and hopefully you can stick around for that. But as we have a desire to learn more about prayer and deepen our prayer lives, we do have those questions, and she sought to go through those, and we looked at those in the first five sessions. Um, and now she gets a little more practical, which is the first thing I've seen anyone do in a um, book on prayer. Or maybe that's why it's called The Indispensable Guide to Practically Everything Prayer, and it's part of the Essentials Made Easy series. Uh, so I like that she kind of touches on some of these things. Um, I'll lift up some of what she has to say and also share uh, some of my own thoughts, of course. But uh, one of the first things she addresses is praying aloud, praying out loud uh, when others are present. And uh, she um, makes the comment and something that I have been aware of for many, many years is that the fear of public speaking is the number one fear in the United States. If you take a poll and ask how many people, you know, what people are afraid of, that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of having to stand up and speak in front of other people. And that ranks even higher than a fear of death. So people are, would rather die than get up and talk in front of people. Um, so you have um, this fear of actually speaking in front of others. And then you add on top of that, the idea of prayer being so very personal. So when we are praying aloud in front of other people, we get nervous, uh, we get concerned, um, we get fearful, actually. Um, and it's a very common thing for many, many people. Of course, she recommends, and as I would, um, that when we are praying aloud and others are able to hear us, to not worry so much about what their ears are hearing, but direct our words to God's ears uh, so that um, it's a conversation between us and God. It is still, prayer is still a conversation between you and God. Um, it, it is not necessarily uh, for those who are hearing it. They may hear it, um, but ultimately you're talking to God uh, in their presence and so that they can hear you. And so that I think that's uh, that helps us a lot when we know that God is going to receive our words no matter what they are, um, then maybe we can worry less about uh, how others might be judging our words or what they might say. I've also found that that Holy Spirit is amazing. Um, and quite often the Holy Spirit intervenes and helps others hear things that we haven't even said, uh, helps them hear what they need to hear, intervenes in their hearts and minds um, when we are uh, truly connecting with God and moving in the holy uh, space uh, when we pray aloud. I thought it was interesting that she brought up the idea of making sure that we don't curse someone uh, in our prayers. And I hadn't really thought about this before. I mean, I had thought, of course, that we don't want to curse another or speak uh, harm to another through prayer. Uh, but what she mentioned is that we do see David do this in the Psalms. He often uh, prays against his enemies. Uh, but we are we should not be doing that. <laughs> You know, what you do in your personal prayer life, that's your business. But uh, when you're praying aloud, when you uh, have others uh, who are hearing your prayers, uh, remember that you are a representative of Christ as you speak um, uh, aloud in these prayers. You are, uh, Christ, of course, is intervening for us, but we should never uh, speak prayer and harm upon another because we don't know another's heart. 
Um, we only interpret their actions through our own experiences uh, and our own filters. And so we can never know their true heart or their uh, true motives and anything that they do. So we should never pray against anyone. We can pray against things like cancer, uh, but we should never pray against anyone, uh, no matter what we think of them. Um, it's not a place for airing our dirty laundry through prayer. I'm not trying to get by with that. Um, I also would tell you that the more you pray aloud, the more comfortable you will get with it. Um, just try to speak naturally. Don't think that you have to have certain words. Uh, it has to be said a certain way. Um, again, just however you talk to God is really uh, an okay thing to do. Remember uh, Moses, uh, mighty, mighty Moses, who led the Israelites out of Egypt and was given quite a lot of responsibility. Uh, he had trouble uh, speaking aloud. Uh, we don't know if he had a speech impediment for sure or what, but he did not feel like his voice was uh, good enough uh, to speak aloud, to pray aloud, to be leading people. And God reminded him that God had made him. He had made his voice. God had made uh, the ears of those that would hear. God was a, a very much a part of um, who we are and how we move and be in this world. And so God would be part of how his voice was received as well. And so that can be an encouragement also. If Moses can do it, you can do it, right? We'll go with that. <laughs> um, but there's also that praying aloud when we're alone in prayer. I think most often we think our prayers or feel our prayers. We don't always speak them aloud. And if we are willing to speak our prayers aloud when we're just praying alone, then we'll be better uh, equipped to do it when someone else is listening. Um, also, I have found that if you talk to God aloud, God becomes more real. God, It's like God is there and is a being and not just a, a spirit or thought, not that God isn't spirit, but that uh, it gives more substance to God when we actually speak aloud to God. Um, I don't know what I was going to say derailed. <laughs> hmm. Sorry. Okay. So um, praying aloud helps us. Oh, I know I was going to say, you know, when we say things aloud, like I have found uh, when I've had a, a great loss, like um, recently when my cousin passed away, um, I knew that she had passed away. I'd heard it. I'd read it. Uh, I'd written things down, but when I had to say it out loud to someone else, it, it, it moved me in my heart more and it became more real to me. And um, I think that happens for all of us. And so I think it's really important for us to make sure that there are times uh, that we do pray aloud to God, that we talk to God with our voices, not just with our heads, not just with our hearts, but also with our voices. Um, knowing that God listens and God responds, and then we are able to to be more engaged in that listening and responding as well when we hear the voice of God in whatever way we hear that. Sometimes um, we are part of a group, right, that is uh, devoted to prayer, and we are praying aloud within the group. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, it may be a specific prayer group. It may be um, at a, a, a study, a Bible study, and then everyone prays, those kinds of things. Uh, all these things that we've talked about before, of course, apply in these kinds of situations. Um, but th then there's a, a little bit more that we, we might want to think about because generally in these situations, there is um, there are maybe prayer requests that are lifted up are asked for. And so it's important to, to, to keep things in mind around uh, verbal prayer requests with others. Uh, we want to be careful about how we present them. We want to be careful that we're not just gossiping or, or carrying on that sort of thing uh, about someone else and that we have permission to share their story. Um, just because it's something that is on our heart and is concerning us, um, doesn't mean we necessarily have the right um, to share their story. Um, so always make sure before you uh, lift up asking for prayer for someone else that um, you have their permission. Of course, we all need prayer and we think prayer is a, a fabulous thing, right? We all can use prayer. Uh, but before you share their story, you can always ask for um, uh, 
a, a prayer, uh, an unspoken prayer for someone. Um, but some folks are more private and they need their own time to move through things. Um, and we need to honor that for them. Um, if you're uh, praying in a group and you are gathering those uh, and you're lifting up prayer requests, it's a good idea to have at least one person that's writing those down. And the reason for that is um, a couple of things. One, you can revisit those between the times that you all are together uh, and be praying for those uh, things, not just in that space, but um, until you gather again. But also, it helps you keep track of those things that um, requests that have been lifted up that God has answered, right? And so that's powerful when you can go back and say, you know, I think we prayed about that and look, God has answered that. Or sometimes what we have to do is go back and look at what we prayed for and then we realize that God has answered those prayers. Not only do we say, oh, there's that answer to prayer I've been waiting for. A lot of times we don't even notice <laughs> when God has answered our prayers because we've moved on to something else. And so it's nice to be able to go back and look at those things we have been praying for and recognize how very present God has been uh, with our concerns and with the world around us. Again, you can uh, make sure that you um, lift up uh, unspoken, uh, just ask for unspoken prayers. Um, God always knows. Uh, he connects also with that heart and mind, not just those uh, words spoken out loud. So he knows who that is and what the concern is. They are often much better than we do. And so we can lift those up uh, still to God because it's important for us to be involved in that because it makes us more compassionate. Uh, and it helps us to be in relationship to one another when we are caring for each other in this way. Um, I think a lot of times we just focus on the health of individuals. And, and uh, the author brings this up too, that we don't want to just uh, talk about everybody's health issues. We all have health issues. That's part of being human, right? We all go through health issues. Not that we don't want to lift up health issues. We absolutely do. But we want to remember that we are uh, bigger beings than just our physical bodies. And so we might want to be lifting up someone's mental health. We might need to lift up someone's spiritual health. Um, those kinds of things, knowing that someone's struggling uh, right now in their faith, those kinds of things, we can lift that up as well um, and have that as prayer. Depending on your group, um, sometimes there's an actual focus for the group that you are gathering or praying with. Um, I know that I um, had an opportunity to be part of a group that met for a while. That was specifically our purpose was to be praying for revival in the community. And so, you know, we found that sometimes we would get off, you know, going this way or that way, you know, getting way off uh, our purpose and our focus. And so we'd have to kind of bring ourselves back and remind ourselves what our focus truly was for that particular group. So your group might have a specific focus. And so remember that when you are bringing up those prayer requests and when you are uh, offering your prayers, because I think that's very important if it's a, like a Bible study and, and you're praying specifically for those involved. And, and those whose lives touch theirs. You know, that community um, is a little bit different than maybe a group that's been called together to pray for a specific thing. Um, I know um, my home church years ago, we would gather together and we'd be specifically praying for a va vacation Bible school uh, that was going on. And so, you know, someone would want to bring in something else. Well, right now we can pray for that at another time, but right now our focus is to be praying over vacation Bible school that's about to start in our building. So, you know, there are times Times when you need to be focused and uh, and keep that focus depending on uh, those that you're gathered with and the reason that you are gathered together. Of course, if there's several in the group, sometimes it's like, okay, who starts? Who finishes? How do we do this? Is it just going to be a pop-up like popcorn? Who, however you feel, just go ahead and pop up and, and pray. Are we going to hold hands? Of course, not as much of that anymore. Um, but there, you know, you have to decide how you're doing this. Um, and don't be afraid to say, okay, we need to decide how we're doing this because it will help relieve a lot of people's stress about, I'm not sure, when is it my turn? Those kinds of things. I think it's it's generally uh, good to just assign a beginning place in the room and an ending place in the room or one person that will begin and end all of it up for the room. If you are comfortable holding hands, then of course the easiest thing is to just to squeeze the hand of your neighbor uh, after you have uh, completed your prayer and you're ready for the next person to pray. That's a real easy way for them to know. But of course, we're not doing a lot of that and that's not always appropriate or uh, even uh, you know comfortable for, for everyone in the room. 
and it's possible that not everybody gathered in the room is comfortable praying aloud. Remember, some would rather die than pray aloud. So, um, and we need to honor that for them too and not push them into something they're not comfortable with. So uh, what I have found is uh, giving space, uh, open space for people to uh, begin their prayers, but then asking everyone to maybe end their specific prayer with, Lord, hear our prayers. And that is a key or a clue to the next person to be able to begin their prayer. Um, doesn't have to be those exact words, but something like that so that people kind of have that clue. Uh, they don't want to say amen because that's a, a complete closing of, of everything. I mean, not that it's the end of the world if they do, but it, we're trying to keep this uh, momentum going of adding the prayers one upon another. And so it's if we can do something like, Lord, hear our prayers, that kind of helps uh, the group to continue on. And then also honoring time. If you're in a specific group that is supposed to be praying for an hour, then honor that. You know, don't don't personally take the whole hour of prayer. <laughs> you know, uh, make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to pray and um, and honor that time because we all unfortunately live in a world where time does rule our lives. So, and then uh, you know, the bigger the group. Um, the, the more we need to be concerned about some of these things, uh, one of the great big giant group that goes out, um, not audibly, but verbally, um, is like our prayer chain at church. Um, so that goes out to lots and lots of people. Um, and so again, in those kinds of things, we want to be concise. We want to limit our information. We want to make sure we have permission, uh, from those who we are sharing about, um, just because of all the HIPAA laws these days, and out of respect and honor of one another. Speaking of time, we usually keep these at a certain time limit. I had something else I was going to head into, but we will save that for the next time because I think we could probably do a whole session just on that. Um, but hopefully this has been helpful um, and practical information for you. Um, we're going to, of course, take time now to pray together. And I will begin our time with three tones and end it with three tones, as is our habit. I will have some music playing in the background. Uh, but I would encourage you, especially if it's not your habit, to spend part of this five minutes in audible prayer, speaking some prayers. It can be nothing but thanks and praise of God um, as you begin your prayer time. Um, it can be lifting up your requests. Um, whatever is on your heart, what, however the Holy Spirit leads you during this time, but I would encourage you to do some speaking of your prayer aloud during this time. This will be one way to start getting comfortable with that is maybe today. All right. We will take this time to pray together and then I will come back and close this with prayer. Let us be a people of prayer.
during that time of prayer, I felt um, a call to lift up one more thing for praying aloud, and that is uh, the praying in tongues. Uh, some have uh, received the blessing of a private um, spirit language, also known as speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. Um, and that is um, a private language. And so I would encourage those that have that blessing, unless you are in a place that is encouraging that um, to be used aloud um, specifically, to remember that that is a very private language for you and the Spirit and God, um, and to not use that regularly uh, when praying aloud. Thank you so much for uh, joining um, me today and um, being here for this time or whenever it is that you watch this. I appreciate always an honor to be um, people of prayer together. And so I would ask you now to um, bow with me and we will close with prayer. A holy God who hears our many voices, our audible voices and our inner voices, O oh God, who knows our hearts much deeper often than we. O oh God, who loves us beyond measure. We pray that our words are carried on angels' wings straight to your ears, O oh God. We know the specific words are not important, but where our heart is, is where you are. As we seek to align ourselves with you, to open our hearts and minds to you so that we may know you better and deepen our relationship with you, Lord, we ask you to give us the words we need when we are praying aloud. Give us the words that others need to hear and send your spirit to intervene that they do hear, Lord, what you desire. Lord, we know that your heart is for all people. We know you uh, have a desire for all of us to come to you in relationship, to experience the joy it is in knowing you. And Lord, if our audible prayers can assist in that, then we willingly submit. We thank you, oh God, that you are always listening. Whether we are speaking aloud, whether we are part of a prayer group or on our knees alone at home, we are so grateful that you are always there. Teach us to pray, Lord. Teach us to pray often. Teach us to pray when we are with others. Teach us to pray when we are in our prayer closet alone with you. Whether we pray aloud or silently, Lord, we know that you are there. And for that, we give you thanks. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you again for being here today. And may God bless you between now and the time we come to pray together again. Thanks. <laughs>